often. We call this the uh, school of happiness. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what we're going to do, first thing, this is going to be about an hour, a little presentation, and feel free to ask questions if uh, you have them as they come up. Uh, the restrooms are down the hall. There's extras around the corner if one's busy. There's a water cooler up front, and there's some hot water back there with some tea, if uh, anybody's interested in a little tea. And if you have a cell phone, I appreciate it. You turn it off. Um, all right, so um, basically this, um, this is going to be like going on a field trip. We're going to just take a little trip here and take a look at this process of the virtual gastric band. Um, I'm the bus driver. I'm going to be your tour guide. Um, I was introduced to this um, in October. Uh, I'll show you a picture of this fella in a minute. He, um, we were invited to a potluck, and when I got there, uh, Dr. Dave Hillis, who was somebody that I had known for a few years, but I hadn't seen him in about a year. Uh, I didn't recognize him because he'd lost so much weight. And of course, I asked him what he did, and he said he'd been he'd gone down to Detroit and and gone through this program. And the story was interesting because his friend was actually having a gastric band surgery and he decided to do it this way. And um, Dave had eliminated 55 pounds and his friend 95 pounds in um, about eight months. So uh, they were, he was basically doing the same thing as Dennis was, but they were, uh, had had different totally different procedure, so it's kind of interesting. So, would you like to begin, just to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Chris, I'm from St. Louis, I have one child, one daughter, 13. And what's your interest in being here? Health. Health okay. and losing weight. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I'm Lori, it's my mom. Uh, sounds interesting, and I'm a major carb addict, so. Ah. <laughs> my, Better make oh. a number. <laughs> so uh, your interest is in uh, helping get rid of some of that carb addiction, huh? All right, mm -hmm. very good. Hurt. <laughs> I'm a carb addict too, but I, I don't feel I need the band, but yeah. I think it would help her yeah. and probably my husband. So, so you're uh, uh, gathering information, huh? Yep. Okay, and we're introducing ourselves, and you're oh, next. I, I'm Laura. Hi, Laura. Tell us about yourself and why you're here. Well, I have done many diets, Weight Watchers, this and that and the other thing, and they work wonderful. And I proceed to gain all the weight back again. <laughs> so well, many, many people experience that yo-yo. Yes. And the, the real reason for that is that things don't change up in your computer. You force yourself for a period of time to follow a diet. And there are some mm -hmm. people who uh, can keep it off, but the majority of people yo-yo. And our body is very interesting because uh, our survival mechanisms kick in. And when you're on special diets, you often, your body often thinks you're starving. And so it increases your efficiency. So when you go back to what you were doing before, your weight usually ends up five or 10 pounds higher than when you started. And so people yo-yo up and end up uh, generally kind of gaining more than where they began. So. All right, so very good. Uh, this is Dave. Uh, the picture on your left there um, was, I think he said March, February, something like that, just before he did the program. And uh, the one on your right is um, sometime in August, end of August, and it's or September. Oh, there we go, March and September. So not a very long time, really. Um, Fifty-five pounds. So our goal, our objective here, and our motto is to teach people to put their health in their own hands. And some some people criticize the hypnosis process, saying, "Well, that's not putting." their health in their own hands, it's, you know, you're doing it for them. Well, it's not like that. 
Uh, we help you reprogram your computer, but you still have to do the work. You still have to make the decisions uh, what to eat and what not to eat. So our focus is not on weight, but on body shape and size. When people are doing this process, uh, it includes exercise. And when you exercise and you decrease your intake, you increase your muscle. And muscle often weighs more than fat, so lots of people will actually have, have smaller weight uh, elimination, but big changes in body size where muscle is more dense, and so they'll have smaller bellies and smaller buns, and um, so things change that way. And the problem that really happens really has to do with health, health issues and mobility issues. Uh, many people, after carrying too much body weight, start having knee and hip troubles. And if you're young enough and you eliminate this, um, generally you don't have that. And then there's something called epigenetics. We are uh, uh, born genetically with certain susceptibilities. And these susceptibilities sometimes get expressed. So you may not or, uh, have really what they call a fat gene, but you may have a tendency to be that way. And what epigenetics show us, uh, this is a concept developed by a guy named Bruce Lipton. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief, is that we can change and turn off some of these genes if they've been turned on. And so that whole concept is about how, um, how we do that, how we turn those things on and off. And the other thing that happens is uh, sometime between uh, our birth and age six, um, we have this experience. And there's two kinds of experiences that people get. One is where their, their life from birth to six is filled with uh, joy and, and um, good things happening to them and uh, there's all kinds of reinforcement and benefits and so this vault or this brain or whatever you want to call it uh, develops properly and there's balance. But then there's the other individuals who for whatever reason, parenting issues, things like that, that this vault is you know, it has a few positive good things, but lots of holes and lots of empty spaces. And sometimes there's trauma and things like that, and so there's need for protection. And so what we find is that uh, when people have excess body weight, a lot of times it's because they have an empty feeling emotionally, and they're trying to fill it with food and sweetness and things like that, but not emotional sweetness more the uh, sweetness from food, which then has the side effect of weight gain. Or people have protection issues. I have a patient I've been working with for a few years. Um, she's 6'1", started out about 380, something like that, and had carried weight, had issues all her whole life. Uh, she eliminated a, around 100 pounds, was looking very good, some guy hit on her in a grocery store and she gained 60 pounds in one month. Uh, but she had been raped and molested as a child and her body size was her protection. Mm -hmm. And you know this is more common uh, than we think. Now, the important part of this program is that we're not going to uh, dig up those past causes and try to fix all those things. Uh, but we simply reprogram so that that empty feeling is satisfied sooner and the need for guarding our protection is unnecessary. And this really has worked very well. The whole concept of what we're doing is that we generally eat too much. For what we need physiologically, we eat too much. And we change that by helping people feel full faster. Uh, many times we eat very rapidly and then we're done eating and we still feel empty. We still feel like we could eat some more. So this whole process is about slowing everything down, eating more mindfully, 
and enjoying what you eat, but and there's, as a result, eating less and feeling satisfied in that process. So feeling full faster is the whole concept of this program. Now we have body signals. These are biological things that uh, our body is telling us. Let's say that you're sitting here and you start to feel kind of cold. Well, your body gives you a signal. You can start getting a few little shivers and pretty soon you make physical movements and that's your little signal to go turn up the thermostat or put on a sweater or move to a different room or whatever. But we get these signals all the time. You get a feeling like you have to go to the bathroom. Well, if you don't do that, pretty soon you're going to have pain and the signal gets stronger and stronger. But unfortunately what happens with hunger is that lots of times we'll go beyond the feeling of satisfied and we'll feel full or stuffed or sometimes bloated pain. Now I'm sure we've all experienced that around the holiday where you have a feast and, and we overeat, but some people feel that with every meal. So there's a difference between head hunger and biological hunger and this process works on programming your brain to understand the difference and then the sensation of feeling comfortable or satisfied and we teach people to eat slower and more mindfully and feel more satisfied. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, one of the people in our last class uh, went to the movies and instead of buying a bucket of popcorn like she usually did, she bought a small bag and ate one kernel at a time, enjoying the taste of every kernel instead of handfuls and only ate half a bag throughout the whole movie. So her overall intake of calories was considerably less than what it would normally have been. And what people tell us is that um, holidays, uh, we did these first two programs right through the holidays, and most people were just amazed that they could eat smaller amounts and feel full and satisfied and were kind of laughing at their friends and family who were feeling full and bloated and uncomfortable and then taking naps afterwards. So that's the, the whole idea. We just eat too much and we help you change that by learning to feel full faster. So it's really important to understand that this is not a diet. You choose, you eat anything you want, we encourage healthy choices, but you decide what you're going to eat and what quantity. And when you slow everything down and you eat uh, in your eating places uh, such as your kitchen, dining room, instead of eating in bed or eating on the couch or eating in the car or things like that, you eat mindfully and uh, you do it with purpose. And it's also not surgery. Now we had some people in our last class that actually had the gastric band surgeries had eliminated 100 pounds or more and then gained it all back. And the one lady said, I learned how to, how to get around it. She could eat in a certain way that, uh, she said it was real simple after a while. I could just eat whatever I wanted. So since we work on the brain, uh, you're not trying to defeat yourself in that. So what is hypnosis? Uh, anybody had experience with hypnosis here before? All right, most people's experience with hypnosis has to do with the movies. And in the movies, somebody's hypnotized into a zombie and you know does stupid stuff. Or you go to Vegas to a show and they make you bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken. And, and although that's interesting, that's not very practical. Now, one of my training programs uh, the instructor brought four people up, he put them in a hypnotic state, told them they were going to bark like a dog every time he said the word love for the rest of the day, and after that it, it would be gone. And then he added that you will not remember this, so um, he woke them up and they were sitting in the audience, and every time he would say the word love, they would, all four of them, would just bark like a dog, and they were looking at each other like, <laughs> I do that. But his purpose for doing that was to show how powerful 
these suggestions can be. There's no point in doing that practically. It's just that it is a good representation of, of how powerful our minds are and how automatically they work once their program is in place. Now, hypnosis is actually a natural brain process and every time you watch TV you're actually in an alpha state. You're being, you're being hypnotized by the television. Uh, you're hypnotized every time you drive your car on automatic. Now most of us have had that experience. We get someplace and you go, wow, how did I get here? Uh, we call that highway hypnosis uh, because you really are in an altered state. When you take a shower for a few, you know, short shower, you're quick in and out, but if you stand under the water for a while, you're actually in an altered state. When you daydream, those are altered states. And if we looked at an EEG, we'd see in the brain and there's lots of alpha brainwave activity. So when we do this process, uh, we help you get into that state for the purpose of reprogramming some of the old uh, thinking processes or the old what we call neuron pathways. Now neuron pathway is a sequence of nerve connections that where an idea gets converted into an action. So you get the idea that you want to eat and when you sit down and eat that is actually a habit and most of us eat very habitually. We often eat the same things all the time, the same quantities, the same location and we create these habits for efficiency. But those are kind of the downfalls, because if you've created bad habits over the years, then you need to modify those. So when you create a new habit, these neuron pathways are, are very fresh. And I like to use the analogy of, of a little, little deer trail. So if you've ever walked in the woods and you see a little path where the deer have walked, it's just a little narrow thing. Well, if you then go a little further, you might see a two-track, and if you go further, you might see a paved highway, and on the way home, you're driving down a, the expressway. All of these are pathways. Some of them have lots of activity through them, some of them very little. So when you start a new habit, it's like the deer trail. When you've used a habit for years and years, that neuron pathway in your brain is like that super highway. And that's why it's so easy to go back to the old habits, because the superhighway is still there. Now, if you didn't use a superhighway for a few years, the grass would grow up through the cracks and eventually everything would uh, deteriorate. Just like in our brain, when we don't use a habit for a while, it does begin to deteriorate. But you're building up the new one that's going to take the place of the old one. So that's really how the hypnosis works. It's creating new habits and in the brain new neuron pathways. So the big question is, will this work for me? That's what everybody asks. Well, the big answer is, if you just stay on the bus, if you're in the room and you sit with your eyes closed and you pay attention to the program, it will work for you. In our first class, uh, we had a gentleman uh, this guy was an um, electrical contractor. He stopped me after the first session and he said, I don't think that worked for me. I didn't remember a thing. And, uh, but he wasn't snoring, so we knew he wasn't asleep. Um, I said, well, just see what happens this week and then we'll talk next week when uh, we meet again. So he comes back in a week and he's laughing because he's down seven pounds, feeling great. And in his job, he drove a lot. And what he would do is he would stop at the party store and pick up a bag of chips or a candy bar or something like that. And he found himself on two occasions going in the party store, walking around, and nothing looked good, leaving without buying anything, which was like never had happened before. And uh, he's down 20, 24 pounds now in about uh, seven weeks. So. He was really ecstatic. For a guy who thought it didn't work, you know, he was on the bus. So that's, it's an important concept to understand that this will work. It's very well created. This, uh, I've studied hypnosis for a long time. And uh, Sheila Granger, who put this together, has done a very, very good job. 
So, what do I need to do? That's the question that other people ask. First, show up. You get a seat on the bus, and uh, our program starts 7 o'clock. It's approximately an hour and a half. Uh, there's several other things that you need to do. The first is that you need to buy something new, one or two sizes smaller. Now, this doesn't need to be anything expensive. It can be um, you know, just a pair of jeans or something like that. But what you do is you hang it up on the outside of your closet, someplace where you can see it every day, and you look at it and you imagine how good it looks, how good you will look when you're wearing that, and how good you will feel. Now, what Sheila's found is that people that don't do this step, um, things don't work as well for them. What we're trying to do is create this anticipation of what it is going to feel like when you reach this first goal. And it should only be one or two sizes smaller because what we're doing here has to be believable. If you came and said, you know, you wanted to drop 10, 10 sizes, your brain goes, that, that isn't going to work. But if you, if you say one or two sizes, you, you, that's believable. So it's, it's a big enough goal to be excited about, but small enough to be believable. And that's why just one or two sizes. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. It should not be something that's already in your closet. It should be something new and something that you're going to be excited about showing somebody. So uh, you don't have to tell anybody what you're doing, but once you get into that, you're going to talk to somebody and you're going to be kind of bragging about, hey, I got this new outfit and this is exciting, I can wear it. So you hang it on the outside of your closet and you look at it every day. The second thing is you listen to a support CD at least once a day. Now when you take the class, we give you a CD. And this is a CD that we call it a support CD. It is a hypnotic session. Um, and we want you to listen to it once a day before the evening meal. And the reason for this is most of the time, that's the most difficult part for people. Many people don't eat breakfast, they eat a little bit of lunch, and by 4 or 5 o'clock they, they're starving and they eat the rest of the night. Now, this is a common pattern for a lot of people. Not necessarily yours, but a common one. And what's really happening physiologically is your brain can only use sugar as its, as its fuel. So if you don't eat something in the morning, and you don't eat something for lunch, by mid-afternoon the brain is starving. And it's going to give you carbohydrate urges. So I don't know if that's the pattern with you, but the people that are carboholics often have that eating pattern. So we want you to do the support CD in the evening, and if possible, a second time first thing in the morning. Now these are about 20 minutes, and so uh, most people can work it out at least once, the one in the evening, but uh, the second one, first thing in the morning, is also beneficial. And this is, again, converting that little deer trail into the two-track and into the caved road. We're trying to build these new neuron pathways. So the third thing is that you'll learn to eat slowly and consciously, so that instead of eating automatically, We've all had this experience. You prepare a nice meal, you snarf it down, and you go, I didn't even taste that. And that's a big problem because there's no satisfaction in that kind of eating where you eat slowly, you put your utensil down between each bite, you put your sandwich down between each bite, you chew it really good, you have a little conversation, it becomes uh, a little bit of enjoyment rather than just this uh, fueling yourself. And you enjoy eating that small portion. That's the big difference. You know, we all have this sort of starvation complex in the back of our brain and we want to eat more. You know, we go to the, to the smorgasbords and we eat huge, huge quantities of food because we want to get our money's worth. So, uh, you will learn to stop eating as soon as you feel comfortable. So not waiting until you get 
full or uncomfortable, just stop eating when you feel comfortable. And you enjoy eating those three small meals. And that's really important. Uh, we focus on three small meals. Some people, because of low blood sugar issues, need to eat uh, little snacks in between. But in general, most people are doing this, eating three small meals and feeling very satisfied. So with the hypnosis part, this is what you're getting into their brains yeah. then? Okay. Yeah. So some of it's um, physical, like you've got to buy the, the um, outfit. But the, uh, these things are what we program in so that you eat slowly. We also want people to eat to uh, use some sort of a vitamin, a multiple vitamin and mineral supplement. Um, in general, that's a good idea anyway, but during this process, it's a really good idea. And then it's really important to drink uh, plenty of water every day. And again, that's part of this program. And there's several reasons for this. You need to stay well hydrated. But when you eliminate body fat, our body fat is stored, uh, it's actually filled full of toxins. When we breathe, uh, let's say you're painting, you breathe in these paint fumes, the stuff that goes into your body, we have a very difficult time eliminating that. It gets stored in our fat. And it gets stored there so it's safe. It's away from your nerves. It's away from your liver and your vital organs. So when you eliminate fat, you uh, loosen up some of these toxins and they have to get out of your body. So drinking lots of water helps that process. And the next thing we're going to talk about is exercise. Exercise is also a way that we eliminate toxins. These hydrocarbons can only get out of our body through breath, through our lungs, and through our sweat, through the skin oil and through the sweat. So exercise has a whole bunch of benefits. First of all, it helps us detox. Second, it helps build muscle. Now muscle builds, um, our muscle uses a lot more energy than fat. And I'll give you a couple of examples. I have a patient who's started out about 400 pounds. She's down to about 350. She was 68% body fat. She would gain weight if she ate over 500 calories a day because this fat has no energy needs. It just sits there, it's not doing anything. It needs very, very little energy. Another guy who is a bodybuilder, he's 9% body fat, should be 16. He's really got more muscle than he should have. He's four to 5,000 calories a day and he's just lean as, as ever because this muscle needs so much energy. So the purpose of the exercise is to build muscle so that you burn more, and fat is burned when you sleep, not when we exercise. When we exercise, you use protein and carbohydrates as your fuel, but the muscle burns fat when you're on idle. So the, more, the bigger your muscular engine is, the more energy is needed to uh, fuel that engine and the more weight you eliminate while you're sleeping. Can that be broken into like two 15 minutes instead of 30 or not? Oh yeah. It, can. yeah. Okay. it doesn't have to be in one session Okay. and people always start very small. We mm -hmm. encourage five minutes a day because if you've not been exercising or you got a bad knee or something like that, mm -hmm. you have to do this really carefully and we explain that as okay. we go through the process. But many people start with uh, walking five minutes a day, and then the next week they walk seven minutes or ten minutes. Um, we want you to do some aerobic exercise, some strengthening exercise, some stretching exercise, and that we, we detail, detail that in the program. Okay. <clears throat> but it can all be broken up. Now, we also, we've added uh, a ninth thing uh, Sheila's program is eight things, uh, adequate amount of sleep. Many people who don't get enough sleep, who are tired, eat for energy purposes. And they'll often eat carbohydrates because it gives them a little boost for 15 or 20 minutes. Then they crash again, then they need to eat some more, and they just do this little cycle all the time. So getting eight hours of sleep, it doesn't all have to be in one chunk. You can only sleep six hours a night, you need, you need a couple of naps, 
That's the way you get eight hours of sleep a day. So why, why hypnosis? Well, the bottom line is we all know what to do, right? We've been in diets many times. Uh, we've read, we've seen it on TV, we've seen it in the movies, we all know what to do, but, but something holds us back. And this is a saying from uh, Leo Biscaglia, uh, to know and not to do is not to know. And unless it's in your computer and you're doing it, you really don't know. We know it logically. Now, there's six important parts of our lives, what we eat and what we drink, our exercise and our sleep, and what we breathe and what we think. And this process is focused primarily on what we think. Uh, what we eat and drink, water is really important. What, what we eat is your choice. We don't tell you what to eat because this is not a diet. The exercise is very important. The sleep is very important. Our breath, extremely important. Without it, we can't survive. But we focus on the thinking, and that's why the hypnosis. So anytime you make a change, there's four steps. I'm going to put them all up here. The first step is unconscious incompetence. And what that means is many times the things we do, we do them by habit. We do them without thinking. So when you eat a whole bunch of food and you don't remember eating it or you don't remember enjoying it, you're unconsciously incompetent. You're doing something harmful to yourself and you're doing it automatically. So the second step is where everybody is right now, conscious incompetence. You're still not doing it right but you're conscious, you know that you don't know. In the first step, you don't know that you don't know. But now, you understand. And then the third step is conscious competence. That's where you're doing it by thinking about it. And the hypnosis helps with that. It makes the thinking about it easier. And then the fourth is where you get to unconscious competence, where you eat correctly without even thinking about it. And the choices you make with your food are correct and it's automatically you don't even have to think about it. This is a really interesting process because uh, one of the things we do is called aversion and aversion therapy by itself doesn't last very long but when you combine it with the other programming in the hypnosis program it's really very effective. So what you do is you take something that's your favorite carb it connected to something unpleasant so that your urges for that particular item are gone and they are gone so and they never come back well they will come back if that's all you do see some weight training programs using hypnosis just do aversion but after a few weeks it kind of wears off but when you do it with the overall program and all of these steps that we talked about um, you really get a really good result so this lasts years then? Yeah, and uh, that's the, uh, the programming and then the support. I didn't, I didn't mention that. Um, we've set it up so that once you go through the program, you can come back to any class at any time at no additional charge. So you have the programming in the class, the support CD, and then the follow-up support. It's like tonight at 8, a bunch of people are going to show up. We're going to do a little mini class. And the, the idea is that... Um, you, you need to support it. You need to, uh, in order to turn this deer trail into a, a super highway, um, it takes some work, it takes some effort. But it's easier because you've done the hypnosis. So again, why hypnosis? Well, we all know what to do, but something drives us, something blocks us, something stops us. And hypnosis can change our thinking so that our choices, and our, it changes our automatic thinking. And that's really what this is about, changing it so that we're uh, unconsciously competent instead of unconsciously incompetent. So by a show of hands, how many people think that this would work for them? Yeah. Very good. So the next big question is, what is it cost? Well, you, you need to ask yourself, what, what would something like that be worth if you could do this and get the size and shape that you want? 
like that advertised on TV, it's priceless. Um, the individual sessions, if you want to come and sit with me during the day and spend an hour and a half, uh, the four sessions are $995. And the group sessions are $495 for the four sessions. And what you get for that is those four sessions. Uh, but most of all, you get to be the size and shape that you want to be. That's what this is about. You get the four sessions, workbook, the support CDs, and then the follow-up program is you can attend any session at no charge and repeat any time. And we'll leave that open for years because uh, people go through changes in their lives. And if they have the knowledge that they can come back and they can get some support, uh, that's a very valuable little option. How often do you have the support session? Well, we're doing classes once a month, so four weeks a month there's a class, and you can attend any of those classes. And each weekly session is different, but when you've been through them all, um, it, it really is supportive just to be there, to uh, hear what other people have to say. Uh, this is why I like doing the groups, because somebody might be having a problem, and then um, everybody else is maybe having the same problem, but they didn't there to ask about it and so it's it's really kind of nice to have that as a group. I've done individual sessions and those people are doing okay but I think they do better in the groups. Now, there's not too many people around that are doing this that do groups, most do individuals. Now Sheila found that uh, when she was trying to figure out what to charge for this um, she started around $200, she charges $1,500 um, she's found that the people that pay more actually have better results. And the analogy, I think, is like if you buy a, an old t-shirt, uh, well, a new t-shirt at, at Walmart and you spend five bucks for it, you think nothing of wadding it up and, or leaving it on the picnic table or letting the dog sleep on it. But if you spend $500 for a really nice suit, you're going to take really good care of that. And that's really... Um, it's kind of an exchange of energy, if you think about it like that. Uh, you're going to get a whole lot more if you have invested yourself in this program. So, big question again, what is next? So, are you going to go on this trip? If you decide you got to get on the bus, you need to buy a ticket, I'll take you there, I'll take care of all the details, uh, but you got to buy a ticket. And what we would like, if people are interested in this upcoming program, and I'll give you the schedule here in a minute, uh, we're going to limit our class size to 12. Uh, we'll have you fill out a registration form, $100 deposit before the class starts, and the balance when the class starts. You can make payments, but what we ask you to do is make payments, and when you have the full amount put together, uh, then you can attend, rather than make the payments as you go, you pay it all up front, but you can do it in installments if you want, and we've had some people do that. Gather the money together, pay us a certain amount every week, when they get the amount, then they come to the class. Okay, questions? The next group starts when? The introductory is tonight. The next class is January 31. February 7, 14, and 21, those are Thursday nights. And then we're going to do a Saturday program. Uh, February 9 is the introductory for that. And then the class is February 23, March 2, 9, and 16. Are those Thursdays too? Those are Saturdays. Saturdays. Okay. And they're going to be from 10 a.m. to uh, 11.30 a.m. I guess I didn't put the time on. Okay. So the... Um, this one is 7 p.m. to 8.30, Thursday nights, four Thursday nights, starting on January 31. And then we decided to do a Saturday one. There were some people that didn't want to drive at night, uh, some people that work evenings, but they have weekends off. So then that uh, February-March program will be in uh, Saturday morning, 10 to 11.30. Now is each session each week? Is it something totally different that yep. you go through? Yep. Okay. 
We do a lot of reviewing in the discussion. The way the program is set up, we spend about um, 45 minutes uh, talking and sharing back and forth and people's experiences, this happened, that happened. And um, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing because uh, by the time people are done, they've got a you know, kind of a camaraderie in the group. Um, then we do a little break, and then the session, uh, the hypnosis session, is about 25 minutes. So we always end with that. And we recommend that people don't discuss the hypnosis for at least 24 hours with somebody else, because this information needs to integrate into your brain. And then once it's integrated, after you've slept on it, then you can talk about the, the actual exercise. You can talk about the program, uh, but we recommend you don't talk about the actual hypnosis process for 24 hours. I have a weird question. I've just kind of started the Atkins on my own, trying to break from carbs. <laughs> so is that something that I can keep doing through this? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can use any particular diet that you choose. Okay. What happens, though, with most people is they they don't do these kind of uh, selective diets. They just eat less. Okay. And so... I didn't know if there'd be some kind of, you know, if I jumped off the Atkins because this is going to... You know, no, I'm going to want to eat healthy then if I'll right. kind of rebound a little bit from being on the Atkins. Atkins. I, think what would, I think what would probably happen with you is you would gradually just kind of wean off of that and into a more balanced... Okay. The, the Atkins program works for some people. Mm -hmm. It works best for O blood types because they, they really need a lot of meat. Uh, a blood types typically can't do it because they don't like meat that well. Um, there's, there's a couple of problems with it. One is it really overloads your kidneys with protein. Mm -hmm. And most people are healthy enough that it doesn't bother. But some people, diabetics particularly, it will plug up their kidneys. Okay. And so we don't ever recommend it for diabetics. Um, but it's an out of balance, unnatural it is. diet. Yeah. And that's really what this is all about is you want to eat natural. You want to eat what you like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a piece of pie. But eating half a pie, that's a different story. Right. And, and this is what often happens. People sit, they have a meal, they sit around, and there's a piece of pie left over. And they eat it, you yeah. know, they eat it you know, a little bit at a time, well, you know, it just kind of, yeah. it just kind of slips in there. Yeah. And one of our programs is, I will not use my body as a garbage can. <laughs> because that extra food needs to go back in the refrigerator or in the garbage can. Your body doesn't need it. Mm -hmm goes there because we've been programmed by well-meaning mothers, you know, got to clean your plate. And we all have them, right? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, other questions? How many people have had this, gone through this program? Well, here? we have had here uh, 20. 20? <clears throat> yeah, well, actually, uh, 24. 24? Yep. And how effective has it been? Well, uh, we're going to do this little session afterwards, so I'm going to get some more feedback there. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of people eliminate five to seven pounds the first week, mm -hmm. and then our objective is one or two pounds a week after that. Okay. And uh, that seems to be kind of holding. Um, lots of people have down 12, 15, some, the one guy 24 pounds. Uh, there's a few people that are are only down two or three pounds, but their pant sizes are like three sizes smaller. Mm -hmm. So they're shifting uh, more muscle and things are moving around. Now, has there been anybody that's just has not worked, period, for? Uh, not that, that I've you, heard of. That you know of. Yeah. Okay. So they're either not telling me or, um, what, or maybe, I don't know. Not that, you know not, that I know. <laughs> not that you know of. Not that you know of. Okay. I just am freaked out with hypnosis, I guess. Well, a bit. talk to me. Because, what's, what's, your, because, what's your concerns? Because, well, the dark barking dog thing. That's, we were always told that you, in hypnosis, that it, you won't do anything that you wouldn't do ordinarily. Yeah. 
you know, and every I, and if I heard the word love, I would not bark. Yeah. Every <laughs> so, night, every night when you go to sleep, mm -hmm. you enter an alpha brainwave state, and five or six times a night when you dream, you're in an alpha brainwave state. This is a very natural place mm -hmm. for your brain to be. And this whole movie thing and the stage hypnosis yeah, see, has really scary. ruined it for, for most people. And like I said, every time you watch TV, you're in one of these states. And this is why you buy stuff that you really, it's true. You really don't want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it is, um, it's very ethical. This the woman has put this together. Uh, Sheila Granger is... Uh, amazing woman and like I said I've studied hypnosis a lot and all of the components are, are very very well structured. It's, it's what I call an elegant piece of work and um, she's doing a, in, in England they're doing a, a clinical trial that's going to get published in a medical journal but right now they're trying to calculate how, many, how much weight people have lost. But the real important thing is it's not about the weight. It's about thinking differently about food, thinking about health, and mm -hmm. changing your body shape and size, and being able to walk. Um, one lady was, sent me an email. Her husband had bought her a necklace for Sweetest Day, but she couldn't wear it because her neck was too big. And by the third week, she could put this necklace on. And she's, she's just crying because it, it made a huge change. I guess my concern that I, I'm sorry, I'm dominating the conversation. No, you're right. fine. Oh. Good. We're listening. I've, I've done Weight Watchers <laughs> and this, and the minute it's over, the weight comes back. Yeah. You know, because I have to have the constant reinforcement, I guess, yeah. or whatever. Well, so am I going to, like, why for the rest of my <laughs> life, I'm going to have to listen to the no, and that, to me, that's worth it if it works. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't have to. Uh, what a lot of people are doing once they finish is they'll listen to it uh, once or twice a week, two or three times a week, something like that. And um, before big events, you know, they get a family gathering or mm -hmm. company party or something. Um, but you know, this is about changing how you think, and these other programs. You don't do that. It's like Atkins. You can force yourself to do Atkins for a couple months, mm -hmm. but it is so unnatural that your, your body is rebelling all the time. And, you know, when you're on a diet, you're depriving yourself. And what happens when somebody says, you can't do that? Your brain goes, Bet. <laughs> you want a bet? I can do anything I want. And this is yes. this is the really important thing to understand. You do what you want. It's just that your wants have changed. And that's really what this is about. You know, and I look at Dave, I saw him again uh, three weeks ago, and he's still, he's down about 60 pounds, but he looks really good. Um, he doesn't want to lose any more weight. But he said every meal is... Is like a, a party because he enjoys the food so much better, and he's eating a small quantity. And we went out for for lunch, and he had a he ordered a pizza. He ate uh, a quarter of a pizza, but it took him 15 minutes, and he just loved that. He took the rest home. See, I have the whole pizza down in about yeah. two minutes. <laughs> but your body's not a garbage can. You right. know? It doesn't yeah, need that other three quarters of exactly. pizza. And in about two minutes, but in about two minutes, that's exactly what many people do, and they eat automatically. So when you eat consciously and enjoy every every bite, and you eat popcorn one kernel at a time, who ever heard of that, right? <laughs> So uh, that's, that's uh, why I'm excited about this. Uh, we've done a lot of diets and different kinds of things. The, the gene diet works very well, but it's too cumbersome. And uh, we've used the uh, blood type diet, and I still often recommend that for general guidelines. But again, um, if you say to an A blood type, well, you really shouldn't eat steak. 
and they've been raised on steak. So the guy who's raised on steak and potatoes, he can still eat his steak and potatoes, but he eats half a baked potato and a half a steak instead of two steaks and a whole potato. And, and is satisfied with that. That's the big thing, is that when you change your brain, you're satisfied with the amount. The electrician guy that didn't believe he was going to be hypnotized. Do you find that if somebody doesn't believe in the hypnosis, it doesn't work, or it would work even if you're a little? I'm well, thinking my husband. If you're in the if you're in the room, if you're on the bus, you're going to get to the end result. And Greg, he actually only took three of the sessions because they work conflicts, and uh, mm. it is taken very well. So the belief in hypnosis, you have to have enough belief to show up and to sit and close your eyes and follow the instructions. And when somebody's sitting there like, you know, show me, well, you know, maybe they can keep themselves in a, what we call a beta state or an awake state. Um, but if they do the, if they listen to the CD every day during the week, um, it's going to get in. And these are uh, what, what we call subjective tests. You know, if you don't buy the, the garment, and it doesn't matter, you know, what you buy, and if you don't drink enough water, if you don't listen to the CD, you know, you're defeating your, your purpose, and you wasted your money. So, if you're not going to do those things, don't spend your money. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of strange questions with sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. You know, very fe fearful of uh, falling in sleep in public or anything. So I'm afraid, first of all, during hypnosis that I would try to block being completely relaxed. Um, and I don't know if that would be, if that well, would block the hypnosis or not, or if you uh, don't necessarily we, have to go. We've had a few deep. people snore, and what I do ahead of time is I just say, you know, some people snore when they get relaxed. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and 